Hello everyone and welcome to Scottsdale 151. I'm your host, Mike Caratanudo. Tonight's guest is Will Becker, the assistant coach at the Fencers Club of Arizona. Welcome to the show, Will. Thank you. Give us a brief background of fencing in general. Uh, well, fencing is one of the original sports in the Olympics. Uh, you have three different weapons fenced, uh, foil, saber, and epee. Uh, our club personally fences uh, mostly saber. Um, it's really a very popular sport in Europe and turning into one of the more popular sports in the United States as well. And then what are some of the different teaching methods and intricacies of the different weapons? Uh, each weapon has its different motions, uh, foil and epi being a little more similar in the footwork motion, which is with the legs, um, and then the upper body motions in the target area is a little closer in saber and uh, foil as well. Um, each one goes into quite different kind of things. Um, each fencer really you know, learns quite a different amount of uh, footwork as they move on. And then how did you get your start in fencing? Uh, actually, I started when I was about 15 or 16 with my father, who's been fencing for about 30 years now. Uh, I used to play a lot of basketball and football. Um, being athletic, you know, it was easy to walk in and be good. Fencing, I walked in, and I mean, they were they were killing me. Every night, I walked in, and I was like, "Why am I not the best yet?" It takes a lot. It takes a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. A lot of work and a lot of discipline, I would think, as well, too. Definitely a lot of discipline. And then, what is your role at the Fencers Club of Arizona? I'm actually an assistant coach. Uh, I give a lot of private lessons. Uh, I work with a lot of our younger students as well as some of our more advanced students now as well. Um, since we've been open about three years, you know, I've, I've worked some fencers into some pretty good results. Here's a short video of the fencing program at Scottsdale Community College, which will show you a little of the history and basics of fencing. Fencing often referred to as physical chess, is one of those curious sports that everyone has heard of, but no one really knows much about. Fencing is a martial art. It's a European-based martial art. It has uh, techniques, it has discipline, uh, it has practice, it has forms, uh, it has all of that that goes into making someone a, a more proficient fencer. Sword fighting as a sport has existed since ancient Egypt. And fencing is one of only four sports that have been in every modern Olympics since Athens, 1896. Today, there are three weapons used in competition. So the epee, being a version of a dueling sword, has a large bell guard on it to protect the hand. Foil was developed as a practice weapon in the old fencing cells or the fencing uh, schools. The third weapon that's used in modern competition is the saber. This is the only weapon where you can score by using the edge of the blade as well as the point. Now that we know the weapons, how does a fencer score? Now in a competition bout, you have three minutes to score five touches. Scoring is done electronically. The weapon blade has electric wires that attach at the weapon's guard. So when a fencer touches their opponent, the buzzer sounds and the machine lights up. Fencing isn't just swords and buzzers. There is an incredible amount of physical and mental demand. It's mental, it's all mental, it's like playing chess, so it's um, remembering the moves that you've been practicing and knowing exactly when to apply them, um, watching the other opponent, anticipating what to do and when to do it. Not only do you have the blade work and the tactics of using the blade, uh, you always are constantly trying to work on and perfect your footwork. Fencing is, it is about um, getting your emotions out, so it's great when you score a point and you say, yeah! That's, that's awesome. That's the greatest feeling. Garcia knows that feeling oh so well as a former junior national fencing champion of Cuba. I've met fencers from uh, many different countries that are in America fencing. You might not speak each other's language, but you certainly know how to fence each other. For very little obligation, somebody can really learn something uh, about this great sport of fencing. Here, if you're a student, you just pay a tuition credit and you're in the club for the semester. Don't worry about the cost of equipment. The school provides everything. But there is something you should know if you sign up. And I try to tell the beginners the first night of class, we don't have a staircase to fight up and down here. There's no chandeliers to swing from. People see fencing mostly presented in theatrical uh, environments in the movies. Movements are usually exaggerated. Uh, this is about uh, Olympic-style fencing down here, uh, the modern sport of fencing. So if you're looking for a new challenge and adventure, Try lunging yourself into fencing. Fencing against another person is, it, it's a wonderfully frustrating, exhilarating, fun experience. 
Oh, great video there. Get a little bit of an overview of fencing. But, Will, what classes are available at the Fencers Club of Arizona? Um, there's actually a wide variety of classes available from beginner to intermediate, advanced, um, different age groups. We have kids as young as 7, as old as 70, 75 years old competing for different levels and different events throughout the United States. Now, when they first come in, you're saying between 7 and 70. Could, could a 7-year-old in the beginning at Beginners be fencing with a 70-year-old? Actually, we, we, we don't let them do the same classes, but we do let them fence with each other. Uh, the kids love to fence with the older people. And actually, a lot of the older parents of kids will come and try it as well. And, you know, they kind of have a good time because, you know, the kids love beating up on their dads and their moms. It's, it's, it's a fun thing to see. I was going to say, but the adults don't let them win, do they? Uh, you know, some of the little kids just beat up on their parents, and, you know, they are better. The parents try to get better really quickly. They don't want to keep having that. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're saying, at what, at what age do people usually get started, though? Uh, it really depends on, you know, wh what when you heard about the sport, when you really wanted to actually begin to compete. Uh, a lot of our Olympic fencers from the, uh, around the country have started around between ages of 8 to 12. A lot of them have started at a very young age and uh, built to that level. Um, I actually started late considering, you know, my dad being a coach. And then when you look at, obviously, what can happen, as we saw in the video, the form, the technique, the practice that it takes, but injury-wise, are there a lot of injuries in fencing? Uh, there are injuries, you know, just like other sports we have, you know, our, our issues with, you know, certain things like knee issues and things like that. Um, there's a lot of things that go into trying to make sure that there's, not, there's no other injuries and no severe injuries. We have um, jackets that we wear that are thick that are made out of ballistic nylon as well as underarm protectors, which is a half sleeve that goes on your fencing arm. So if a blade does happen to break, you'll be protected from that under jacket as well. It's good to know. And tell us about the club's competition and awards that you've won. Uh, well, we've, we host tournaments um, from the World Cup level all the way down to local events. Uh, local events a lot are used for building and stepping stones for our fencers as well as other fencers around the, the state of Arizona and other states. Uh, we have World Cup events that we host. Um, most recently we hosted a Junior World Cup in February, the beginning of the month. We've hosted it for three years now. And it's basically an event for junior women's saber and, and men's saber fencers from around the world to come and compete um, for their overall uh, championship of the world at the end of the year. Um, and we've had some of our students as well winning those events and meddling in those events. And if they've medals here, where else internationally can they go to? Uh, they can, I mean, they can go anywhere. Europe, the sport is huge. And it's so big that you even see wheelchair fencing on billboards. I flew into Poland and saw a wheelchair billboard. We're fencing right out of the airport. And it's, it's definitely a big sport there. Uh, South America, all around the United States and Canada as well. Well, definitely a big following. We'll take a short break, but when we return, we'll have a demonstration with a couple members from the Fencers Club. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to Scottsdale 151. Now Will Becker and his students from the Fencers Club of Arizona will give us a live fencing demonstration. Well, what you see here in front of us is we have a fencing machine. You'll see lights light up as they hit each other. Um, so for instance, Sophie on my left side, when she makes contact, you'll see a green light come on. When Emma makes contact, you'll see a red light come on. And you see, for instance, how she blocks the blade, which we call a parry allows her kind of the right of way to go and hit her. You see that they're very active. They don't want to they don't want to just stand there and let be hit. They want to do something. They want to they want to have a workout. And obviously we see in here the lights going off. How sensitive is the is the jackets that they're wearing? Oh, well, they're very sensitive. If you make any contact with the blade on the actual metallic material anywhere from that waist up in the wrist up area, it'll go it'll go off. 
sometimes you get a little unlucky and it doesn't like to work out for you, but for the most part, if there's any kind of contact, it's going to come on. For instance, there right there. She tries to parry, doesn't really get the touch, and now she nicks her and the light comes on. And then I noticed one thing too, is that they're moving pretty quick and trying to score points right away, getting that that is the whole goal is to score the points. Right. But you're usually looking to score pretty quick. Oh uh, yeah, your goal is your goal is in this weapon in Saber specifically is to try and try and work the action in as soon as possible with actual thought process obviously because it's so sensitive and so easy to hit. As you see the blades, when there's contact and things, the blades are very flexible. So if you make any semblance of a motion to this person, it's very easy to put a light on. It doesn't make it easy to score the touch, but it is very easy to actually get a light on that box. So in this instance, with what they're trying to accomplish, it's you're not really, you want to play defense, but it's not really defense. It's about attacking and enforcing your will. Right. So sometimes you will, you will defend trying to throw it off. But for the most part, like you said, they, they want to attack. They want to go forward and press the issue. Because if they press the issue, they have a much better opportunity to score the point. And then most matches are scored how high? Uh, it depends on the actual part of the competition. The beginning part we call pools. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have anywhere between six and seven fencers in their pool. And it's all five-point bouts against those people. And then the next round is direct elimination. And those go to 15 for the regular categories. The kids and the veterans have different... Uh, numbers as well based on you know their categories and then form wise from here what are, what are you looking at from them when you're when you're coaching or when you're just working with them well, as we look at them in their practice and we want them to be in a good squatted position so that they have control of their bodies and they don't fall over and we want to make sure that their their bodies don't raise too high so that when they make a motion they can react sharply and their goal is to be able to react on a dime if they stop this way they should be able to move the other way right away And then, I'm going to say cardio-wise, you think it's going so fast, but what kind of workouts are they doing outside of obviously learning the form and fighting, but what kind of workouts do you have them on? Because I would think it takes a lot from you cardio-wise. All right. And as you can hear them breathing now, and if they weren't in good shape, it would be, it'd be hard for them to even do what they're doing now. Uh, we, have, we have a full workout room, so we do things, you know, running the treadmill, rower, elliptical, bikes, um, long-distance runs, sprints, excessive footwork every night. Uh, this is the kind of things that you, that you need to be able to, to be a fencer at a high level and run through tournaments fencing you know, 15, 20, 25 bouts in each event. If you don't have these things, you know, you're going to get winded. And if you're winded, your competitor is going to take advantage of you. So if you were to go to the, the championship match, you're saying you could easily fight, go through 20 matches at least? I don't know if I would say easily, but oh. you could definitely, I mean, you can definitely do it. You know, this, okay. this is the goal is to be able to get through these, these matches while still having a reserve and things to be right. able to, you know, keep fighting, keep going through these. Depending on the size of the event, you know, it could be, it could be a lot of ma matches, it right. could be less. Yes, when I was saying easily, I didn't mean it was easy. I mean, <laughs> it, it, you could see it up to that many right. matches before you get to the championship itself. Right, and you could see many, many, many of those matches. And that's all usually in one day, or is it spread out over two or three days? Most of the time they run those events in one day, but uh, for World Cup, for instance, is in nationals that are, in, or in events that are national and international events, those events they start the first round of the pools we talked about earlier, the first day, and then the second round of the direct elimination starts out the next day. Oh, wow, okay. And these two have a lot of experience in those as well. You know, they're, they're 11, ranked 11th and 15th in the world, so they, they have their experience in international events and the ability to really find that extra reserve that they really need to continue going. All right, guys, halt. Halt. Stop. Wow, that's a, that's a great job. Yeah, breathing hard, definitely. <laughs> Both did a great job. Well, I'd like to thank our guest, Will Becker, for joining us tonight. We certainly enjoyed learning about the sport of fencing on Scottsdale 151. We also would like to thank the students for providing us with a fencing demonstration. You can check out their website on FencersClubOfArizona.com. We hope you've enjoyed the show. I'm your host, Mike Caratanuto. Thanks for watching.